but don't forget to chat in the box for me. I hope I can see the chat. But welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for coming for my first sponsored webinar for kids. This is sponsored by Diversity and Dentistry Mentorships. Um, it's an online uh, platform community on Facebook to help increase the diversity in dentistry um, so that it can more reflect the ever-changing diversity of our nation. But this is all about the science of kids because I feel like if we reach our kids early enough and teach them about um, the fun and the science of dentistry, then they're more apt to be interested and look into it as a career choice. And especially for our kids who maybe don't see a lot of dentists that look like them, this can help um, empower them to see them in their dentist and grow up to want to be one. So a quick introduction. My name is uh, Dr. Haisha. I'm a board certified pediatric dentist. Um, I founded Diversity and Dentistry Mentorships a couple years ago when I learned of the staggering statistic that only 3.8% of black uh, dentists in America are black. And so that just struck a chord in me that I, I wanted to see that number change and it empowered me to try to do something to make a difference. And I knew there were others and I've been joined by many of my colleagues and friends of dentistry who are um, aiming for the same thing. Um, I have I've uh, written a book that just was just released this year called Cavity Free Kids, How to Care for Your Kids' Teeth from Birth Through Their Teenage Years. And basically that's just a resource guide for parents to help them, empower them to um, help raise the next generation of cavity free kids. Um, and this, this, uh, the website or the landing page for the book is the Mommy Dentist, but it also has some free resources for parents to help them do that. And then I, uh, I have a private practice in Tucson. It's called Tucson Smiles Pediatric Dentistry, which I'm a partner in. And um, I, uh, my education is from, I did my undergrad in, at Pepperdine University. Not pre-dental, but sports medicine, but still have a science background. And there's a whole story behind how I ended up in dentistry. But I graduated from UMKC in Kansas City School of Dentistry. Um, uh, and of course, my emphasis was in pediatric dentistry. That's where I knew I wanted, that's where I needed to be in pediatrics. And then I got my specialty, specialty certificate at University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. Okay, so the state of diversity in dentistry, just a quick couple <clears throat> minutes for our parents, just so you can see why this is, is so important uh, to me. Um, uh, so when I first learned of the statistic, it was 3.8% black. And the most recent data that we've gotten out of the ADA in the, uh, in the census is now that blacks represent 4.3% of dentists, Hispanic 5.3. If you hop over and look at the column of the population that are dentists, you'll see that <clears throat> it's disproportionate where there's 12.4 black, 17.8 Hispanic, um, and, and also in, with the Asian population is uh, a bit reversed, the more Asian, and the, and the majority of US dentists are white, 73.6, um, representing the population of 61. So um, this is why I formed Diversity in Dentistry Mentorships. Our mission is to educate and empower underrepresented minority youth to explore dentistry as a profession through mentoring. Of course, I wanna teach all kids about the, the wonderful uh, career of dentistry and how it's serving others and helping others. My emphasis is just to expose it to underrepresented minority that may not get to see dentists again that looks like them. So my vision is for the basis of dentistry to reflect that of our nation's ever increasing diversity. And this will be impactful because it will um, impact the lives and the dentists and the communities they serve, improving the overall delivery of dental care to everyone. Okay, so now let's get into the meat and potatoes. Let's bite into some good information. Um, I wanted to see, and I'm trying to see if I can um, see the chat. I don't know that I can see the chat so you guys can ask questions, but perhaps I'll, I'll pull it up on my phone. If you're on Facebook, let's see if it's streaming, you can just um, uh, put your questions there in the comments. Anybody see it on Facebook? 
I think we're gonna have to not do that. So that's okay. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> we'll get back to our presentation. Have something to eat and then I'll turn it back on. So did you mess it up? You turned it off, didn't you? Okay. Do -do -do -do. Let me get back to. Hey guys, hang tight here. Let me get back to that screen. <clears throat> okay, we're back on. So it's probably not streaming, but that's totally okay. All right, so why do we need our teeth? Anybody? Hey, so we need to eat. We need to eat. We need to eat. Yes, that's exactly right. We need our teeth to bite into foods for our health um, and bite into hard and tough foods. Could you imagine eating an apple or biting into a bagel without your teeth? That would be kind of hard. <laughs> we also need it to speak. Certain sounds we need, we need our teeth to help keep our tongue where it's supposed to be and so that everyone can understand what you're saying and you can play with your friends and speak with your friends. We also need it for that bright smile and we want to keep the smile healthy by brushing and flossing on a regular basis and we're going to talk about that a little bit later as well. So what is a cavity? Anybody want to chime in and tell me what a cavity is? Cavity is some type of thing that like wants to um, mess up your tooth and um... <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely will do that. It will mess up your tooth. A cavity is simply a hole in a tooth. A dental cavity is a hole in a tooth. And a hole can start off small like this. Do you guys see that little spot there in the tooth? But if we don't take care of that cavity by, you know, brushing, keeping it clean, and seeing your dentist to treat it, this little hole can turn into oh, that. That is someone's tooth with a big old hole in it. It's like a crater with all that mushy brown stuff stuck in there. So that's not good, right? You have a big hole like that, that can cause a lot of pain. It'll be hard to eat your favorite foods. It'll be hard for you to concentrate because the tooth hurts. You won't be able to concentrate as well in your schoolwork and maybe not do as well. So we don't want big cavities like that. It gets worse, guys. Are you ready? I hope no one gets grossed out. Whoa, look, that's actually sadly one of my patients who had a lot of cavities. And if you look right up here, do you see that part? That was part of the root that the infection broke through the gums and the root was showing right there. Okay, I think I have some people trying to get in. Oh. Okay. All right. Look at that, whoops, look at that. Do you see where it's all white and mushy in this area? That is the bacteria that we call plaque. This is when somebody has not brushed their teeth for months, maybe even years, and it rots out your teeth like that. What if you had teeth like that and try to smile? Do you think that person wants to smile and show their teeth? Are they able to eat their favorite foods? and talk to their friends? I think that'd be hard. Okay. So let's talk about what the anatomy of the tooth is, okay? What parts are of the tooth? So the outer part, the white part right here is the enamel. That's the strong outer layer of our tooth. That's what we need to keep strong by brushing with our fluoride paste and it, the stronger it is, the least likely it's gonna make, um, allow the sugar and the bacteria and the acids to make holes in the teeth. Once a hole starts and it gets a little bit deeper, it gets into this brown layer, we call it dentin. And when it gets really deep, this side, part in here called the pulp, it has all the blood vessels and the nerves that causes your tooth to have a feeling. So if a cavity is in there and it gets in the nerve, it's going to cause a, a really, really bad toothache. So how does a cavity form? You got to have a few things, okay? So if you, a cavity will happen, you need to have a tooth, okay? And we all have teeth, right? I see all your chompers. 
you ha the cavity is also dependent on how much sugar you've taken, and we're going to talk about different types of sugars, and then also bacteria or germs. We like to call them sugar bugs in our teeth that we have to brush out because the sugar bugs, guess what they like to eat? Anybody want to tell me what the sugar bugs like to eat? Sugar. They like sugar. Yeah, it's very sugar. good. Yes, and it's the sugar. It's a combination that makes the acid. It makes a hole in the tooth. There's a little picture of a sugar bug. Now that's just a cartoon of a sugar bug. You want to know what a sugar bug really looks like if we got our science minds on and we got our microscope? Look at that. We call this guy Streptococcus mutans. Who wants to say that word with me? Yes, very good. Oh, I'm grinning ear to ear here. So the, that is a close-up um, view of what the bacteria in our mouth looks like. When I show kids uh, this one, what's this picture here? You see all that white stuff and it's bleeding and everything. If we that gushy, mushy, cottage cheese looking white stuff that is the plaque, it has bacteria and food. If we put that in a microscope, guys, you will see like little buggies crawling all around. So when your mom and dad tell you, don't forget to brush and floss your teeth, they're wanting you to get those bugs and those sugar bugs and the bacteria off your teeth so they don't get sick like that. Would you want to maybe taste that? Would you like to put it on a cracker and eat that little mushy stuff? No. That would be gross, right? If you're eating, if you're not brushing or flossing, you're basically eating your bacteria every single day, okay? So I hope everyone's not gonna fight mom and dad when they say, go brush your teeth, go floss your teeth, okay? <laughs> so when you go to the dentist, sometimes it's helpful when they have a little pink dye to put on your teeth because then you can see those bacteria bugs because the sneaky thing about them they kind of match your tooth and they're invisible so you can't see how much bacteria is sitting on your teeth so we have this little magic solution that gets your teeth pink but it only shows up dark pink where the bacteria was and this little kiddo had just finished brushing their teeth but um, then when we painted their teeth, you could see where he missed the bacteria bugs. So it takes, well, let me ask, can anyone tell me, how do I get my chat up, um, how many minutes you should brush your teeth? Two. And, oh, yay! Very good. I'm so proud of you guys. You have no cavities. Okay, so let's talk about sugar. I think everyone knows the candy and cookies and gummy bears and stuff, chocolate um, and lollipops all have sugar. But some things that our moms and dads may not realize so much is that even crackers and chips, those starchy snacks that have been um, broken down so it's easier to eat, is also, when it's broken down like that, is easier for the bacteria to eat. And guess what? Those starchy snacks, we call them carbohydrates, they are a form of sugar too. So we would never imagine, um, you would never imagine your mom would give you like a bowl full of cookies a couple times a day as a snack. That would just be so much candy. That would make you sick. But sometimes we don't think about it when we go and get a bag of chips or crackers, and then if you don't put it in a bowl and you're just snacking out of the bag all day, and since we've been home and not been able to go to school, sometimes some kids are snacking like that all day on chips and crackers and pretzels, not really thinking that it's harmful for our teeth, but they are, okay guys? So your parents are gonna make sure that you have a designated snack time and we're gonna limit how many of the goldfish crackers and the and the chips and the pretzels. Just maybe we have something like that, like the, let's say yeah. the cheesy crackers. No, I do not want this and that. <laughs> and you, uh, after you eat them, and maybe an hour later, if you go look in the mirror, you'll still see those cheesy crackers stuck in your grooves, so of your teeth, of your molars. 
So that means the bacteria bugs are having more time to have a fun picnic in your mouth. They're like, oh yay, he didn't brush his teeth. I'm gonna eat all these cheesy crackers and make those big old gross cavity holes in their teeth, okay? Now I'm not saying just a few snacks a day is not bad, but if you don't, if you have them, you gotta make sure to brush. So let's talk about sticky candies, like the gummy bears, the tacky candies. When it's sticky like that, hun, they stick to your teeth longer too. So I actually like to say to kiddos, like for a treat, I wouldn't mind you rather maybe having some frozen yogurt or ice cream, even chocolate. Chocolate, all those things kind of melt away and they're not sitting on your teeth as long. Does that make sense? So if you have a gummy, gummy snack, gummy vitamins, parents watch out about the gummy vitamins, Gotta make sure to brush those out or go old school and get the old dis dissolvable Flintstone type. They will, the scummy things stick on the teeth longer and they are just more prone to cause cavities. Do I have any questions from anybody about that? No, okay. I do. Oh, please, yes. Um, what do you, can you hear? If you eat like a, one snack a day, will that give you a cavity? No, no, no. It's not one snack a day. It's just fine. Um, we like to say schedule like two to three snacks a day. But let's talk. That's a great question you brought up. What are some healthy snacks we could have instead? I'm not saying you can't have snacks. We just want to make sure we're not having a lot of sugary, sticky snacks. Does anyone want to tell me a healthy snack their parents give them? Yes, fruit. Fruit, that's amazing. Fruit is very good. Vegetables. And vegetables. Mm -hmm. and has, one type of cereal it tastes like it has sugar, but it doesn't actually have any. Oh, really? <laughs> well, that is really good. I like that. Um, cheese. Yeah. What about cheese? Anybody like cheese sticks? Cheese yeah, cheese sticks are really good because it has a lot of calcium and it helps make our teeth strong. Yogurt is another good snack too, okay? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay, so now all you kids that are super smart in math, you know what one plus one is, right? Yeah. Tell me, what's one plus one? Two. Yeah, that's way easy, Dr. Heisha. I forgot I'm talking to the smart kids here. Well, the science of dentistry is kind of like a math problem, okay? So we're gonna have our yucky, yucky bacteria, although these pictures are kind of cute. <laughs> but here we have the plaque, which is the bacteria, which is also like germs, okay? So AKA the sugar bugs. When you add that with sugar, and remember sugars can also be uh, chips, cookies, lollipops, candies, then you will get acid. And I remember earlier before we got started, I asked if anybody knew what acid was, but acid is a strong, strong liquid. I always tell kids if you had a drop of acid on your shirt, it might make a hole in it, it's so strong. So acid in your mouth will make holes in your teeth. Okay, so if you have acid on a healthy tooth, then you end up getting a, a decayed tooth or a cavity, okay? So that is an easy formula to remember. The bacteria likes the sugar, the, and it results in acid. Acid on a strong tooth weakens the tooth and allows the holes to form and a cavity to form. Any questions? <laughs> All right, so where do we find acid and what types of drinks have acid in it? Throw out any answers for me. What do you think is acidic? What do you think is acidic, Remy? Just say it. I think um, acidic is like orange juice oh, and lemonade. Yes, yes, those are very acidic. Some of the common things, so definitely juices, mm -hmm. <clears throat> sodas, um, 
uh, for parents too, even the diet sodas is the carbonation that's acidic, that's still harmful for our teeth. I know a lot of my patients and my kids <clears throat> are very active in sports, maybe not right now, <laughs> but um, you know, especially if you have soccer practice and you, every like four times a day, and if you're drinking Gatorade at each practice, those energy drinks um, have a lot of sugar to give you energy and then it forms acid. Now 100% juice is okay. Like, like real fruit juice is most, uh, we recommend to have that juice when you're eating something. But in between meals, you should only have water. Remember, you guys told me that at the beginning, that water is the best drink for our health and our teeth. But the juices we find in these like juice boxes, like, oops, sorry, let me go that way. Um, Capri Suns or the box drinks, those are diluted juices. They have some um, corn syrup, sucrose syrup. Um, so those things are, those juices are harmful for our teeth. And also one thing I wanna to share to um, parents who aren't in the field that diluting the juice is even worse, um, especially for a toddler. We don't want juice in their sippy cup. But if you're diluting the juice, then they're drinking it for a longer duration of time. And so their mouth is acidic for, for more, more hours at a time. And then that acid will of course break down their teeth. I'd rather them have their juice with their meal, drink it, be done with it, Maybe have some water in between and it's, and it's gone. But nursing a diluted juice beverage is, is, is worse. Here's a little scale. This is, you can find this and download it for free on the mommydentist.com site. This was in my book, Cavity Free Kids. But it kind of gives you an understanding of acids and um, how it relates to um, things that are not acidic like water. So do you see the glass of water, guys? It's on the far right-hand side. When we measure how acidic something is, we give it a number on the pH scale. So seven is something that's very neutral. It's neither acidic or not acidic. Basic is the word we use. But we start to, your tooth starts to weaken when it's in anything that's less than 5.5 on the pH. So what I didn't make clear is what's neutral is the water at seven. The smaller the number, look how it goes blue to green to yellow, orange, and then to red. The pH of one, that's the most, most acidic thing. That's a picture of a battery that you would have like in your car or your, your devices. Acid battery is so, so acidic. But already at 5.5, your enamel on your tooth starts to weaken. So if you have a soda that's a pH of four or apple juice or orange juice that's a pH of like 3.5 or like lemonade, pH of two, all those acidic drinks will weaken the enamel of your teeth. Okay, guys? So that's why we want you to drink more and more water. And for parents out there, coffee and tea can be acidic as well. So make sure to um, wash, uh, wash it down with the water afterwards. Ooh, and also the little sparkling waters, those are acidic as well. <laughs> okay, so the effects of acid on our teeth. This is a picture on the left side of one of my patients. Do you see where it's darker yellow inside that white circle of the tooth? The drinks and the hot and spicy chips and the sour candies that this kiddo like to eat on a regular basis. I'm sure no one eats a lot of flaming hot Cheetos on this call, huh? I hope not. <laughs> but those spicy, spicy chips can weaken the enamel and the enamel erodes away or it, it dissolves away. So he lost like his little cusps of his molar. And on this kiddo who didn't brush really well around their braces and see all that plaque bacteria, remember we know what that is, that bacteria becomes very acidic uh, and a de it takes away the strength of the enamel, we call that decalcify, and that's how you see the spots around the teeth there. See, that was him before, this is when he got the braces off. No good. So repeated attack of acid on the teeth can last for 20 minutes afterwards. So you may say, oh, I had a juice and I'm, I'm done, or a soda and I'm done with it. But the acid is still eating away your teeth even 20 minutes later. 
So that is not good. That's why we want more water. So now we're gonna do our, I'm gonna show you a quick little demonstration. Let me come back off of the share screen. Okay, thanks for hanging in there, everybody. I'm so proud of you. Okay, so this is what you guys, moms and dads can do later. If you get just a bottle of water and a cup, here's my water, okay? And then a cup of apple cider vinegar. So we've got the vinegar here, there. And then just some calcium tablets, some Tums or whatever you have around the house. So we're using the calcium tablets because calcium is a mineral that uh, you know, makes up our enamel of our tooth. So here are my little calcium tablets. So this, just imagine boys and girls, that this, we gotta put our imaginary, imagination um, helmet on here. <laughs> that the calcium tablets like our tooth is made up of a lot of calcium, okay? If I put a tablet in the water and I'm gonna put a tablet in the apple juice, oh, and I didn't tell you, sorry, the vinegar is acidic like apple juice, okay? So this is our apple juice, this is our water, and these are our teeth. So I'm gonna put a tablet in each one. I want you guys to just, just start telling me, what do you think is gonna happen? with the, the uh, tablet. Tell me. I think soda, I think um, it will um, decay the tablet and the water will decay the tablet. That's good. Anyone else agree? Yeah, okay, so look, I just put it in. <laughs> so here's the tablet in the water and you don't really see a whole lot going on. Here in the acid, it's going to be hard to see, but you'll do it when you do it at home. You're going to see a lot of bubbles coming from the tablet, the calcium tablet. So those bubbles are representing um, it breaking down the, the tablet, breaking down the tooth. So by the time that we're about done with this presentation, we're going to see, we're going to compare. Remember, we're scientists here. We're going to compare to see what the tablet looks like in the water and what's happening with it in the apple juice or the soda, remember acid is found in those things. Okay, so maybe you guys can try that a little bit later today. Thanks. Okay, let's get back. I'm gonna finish up here. Oh, I'm gonna see chat. Maybe there's some questions I can answer. <laughs> yeah, that was gross. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the presentation. Doo -doo -doo. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. This is first time, it's fun. You learn how to do it, okay. So you were right. So the, the tablet, the calcium is uh, getting broken down in the vinegar more. And we'll look at it at the end. So we want to make sure when you're eating your meals and your snacks that you're getting food from the five food groups. Um, so fruits and grains, vegetables, protein, and dairy. Can anyone tell me a source of protein that they like? I like them. No, they like they like fruits. They like it's a source of protein. They don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? That's so great. So happy to hear. What about grains? You guys know what grains are? Yeah, like bread, whole whole grain bread. Breads are good. So. So some parents are, and friends would have asked, well, are breads like a carbohydrate and starchy like the crackers? The difference is the crackers, they are, they've been broken down. We call them processed. So it's easier for the bacteria to eat it and make the acid. For whole right. grains, right. like in our breads, it's not as easy to break down. So it's better to have, you know, your peanut butter on a piece of toast versus your peanut butter on a cracker. Okay, and remember dairy, like cheese and yogurts are really great for our teeth. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay, so we talked a lot about diet, what we're eating and drinking, but we gotta make sure we are keeping our talkers super duper healthy. And that entails- my sister? Yeah, oh, do you see that, Grace? <laughs> Some, you know somebody in one of these pictures. Um, but we wanna make sure that we are brushing how many times a day, guys? How many times? Uh, or, times yeah. a day. Or two whole yes. minutes? Two. 
I was okay. doing three. Some tricks to know uh, to help you track how long you've been brushing your teeth because if you just think you're brushing for two minutes, I can guarantee you you're probably not brushing for two minutes. So you guys can ask your parents to get you like a little timer or a little sand timer. Maybe your dentist has a sand timer to get you that's two minutes long. Um, you can play a song on the phone and brush for a whole length of the, your favorite song. There's a lot of apps now that have timers on it. So, so talk to your mom and dad about seeing if there's some fun way to time your brushing. So that's going to be your goal tonight. I want to have you brushing for two whole minutes and making sure you're flossing before you go to bed. And parents, we just need you to assist or supervise until they're around the age of six to seven. That's when they have the best dexterity in their hands to do a proper brushing. Uh, for your toddlers, here's a great demonstration in this picture of standing behind your kiddo so she sees herself in the mirror so she can see where the toothbrush is going and you can actually and see well too. And brush your teeth, brush your gums, and brush your tongue. Like massage your gums with a toothbrush and brush your tongue. Get all that gross bacteria out. Okay, so we did a lot today. We talked about how sugar and plaque combine to make those terrible acids that causes cavities in our teeth, juices and sodas and energy drinks and lemonade and teas. Those are all acids that are found in those drinks, uh, have acids in those drinks. We wanna make sure we're limiting how many starchy snacks we're eating. Those chips, the dry cereals, the crackers, those can cause cavities too. So it's not just your candy bar and your lollipop and your hour later or your Starburst. Guys, we only want to have one cup of juice a day. So your parents, if you want to have juice, you're going to say, okay, if you have juice for breakfast, then water or milk for dinner and lunch. Or if you're going to have juice or soda for dinner, then only uh, water or milk for breakfast and lunch. So one cup of juice a day, don't dilute it. Make sure you're eating those balanced meals with the fruit and protein and grain and veggies and dairy every day and don't snack too much. <laughs> and we are going to brush twice a day for two minutes with the fluoride toothpaste. Um, for toddlers from kids age one to three parents, just a, a smear, rice sized amount of fluoride on there. And um, three years old and up, they can go to a pea sized amount of toothpaste and make sure to see your dentist twice a year. Now I know all your dentists like me have been missing seeing you in their office and have been hoping that you guys have been brushing and flossing really well. So as soon as the offices are starting to reopen, make sure you get back in so they can catch those sugar bugs and catch those cavities before they get too big. The most important thing we wanna do is help prevent you from getting cavities. And the best way to prevent it is what we're eating, what we're drinking, and how we're taking care of our teeth and gums. So just to end, um, I want to invite you guys, um, I know most of you are yeah. on, but you can invite a friend or family member, our colleague. We're just trying to build the form of diversity in dentistry um, to help get to our youth early, to tell them more about dentistry, and let them know that it is a, a viable career and a, an attainable career for them that maybe they haven't thought of before. And if we can guide them on the right curriculum they need to take to how to study, how to be prepared, then they're gonna be more successful candidates for great schools. They're gonna have better study habits for great colleges, which will in turn help them be more successful candidates for dental school and hopefully change the disparity of black and minority dentists in the United States. So make sure to hop on Facebook or Instagram. And um, I wanted to let you know the book, 100% of the net pro proceeds will go to support the mentorship program. We are um, forming as a nonprofit so we can raise funds for a scholarship for minority students. So that's gonna take some time, but that's in the works. Um, so anything we can do to help fund that is all going to go to help increase the diversity in dentistry and help uh, treat our families and our communities that need us the most. So 
Um, but some resources here. Dr. Kroll had all those gross pictures that are my favorite. His book is called The Gross, Disgusting, and Totally Cool Mouth Book. Um, so that's a fun one. I think he even has a new edition out. And of course, there was resources um, from the American Dental Association and American Academy of Pediatrics Dentistry. But you can connect with me um, by my email, the smile at the mommy dentist.com. There's more information of the book and the free resources at the mommy dentist.com. And if you visit my speaker page, there's stuff on there from the book to diversity in dentistry and um, topics I'm passionate about and want to share with the world. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me this morning, afternoon, depending on where you are. Hope you learned something new. So I, um, I took that down so I could see everybody. You can unmute yourself. I'm happy to take some questions or some comments. Anything you guys want to share? You guys are a great audience. I wish all I could say all my students were like that when I go to speak to them. Is she I want you to Yeah. Well, no worries. If you're shy, you can put them in the chat or you can ask your mom or dad to email me and I'll make sure to answer them. But I am so glad you're here and I hope you learned something new. And I want you guys to always listen to your mom and dad because they're always right. <laughs> and no fighting back. They're trying to brush your teeth and pop your teeth. Thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vitrell, for everything. Okay, that was great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Layla. I'll figure out the stream next time. Maybe I can figure it up later. Class. That was fun. Yes. Love y'all. Bye. 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 Why don't you say bye, class? Bye. 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 Oh, guys, don't forget to check out your tablet. See, look, this one's almost gone. The water one is still healthy. So do your experiment today. Uh, why do you have to you put ready? the thumbs up on? Yeah. I don't want you to. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate, it. I appreciate you very much. Bye. I love you. <laughs> Bye-bye, sweetie. Bye. <laughs>